Here I've got a nice viewer suggested integral. So our goal is to find the integral from zero to infinity of the natural log of x over one plus x squared plus x to the fourth. And we're gonna use three tools in order to break this up into a manageable calculation. So the first of those tools is this nice change of variables integral identity. So we've got the integral from one to infinity of natural log of x over f of x equals minus the integral from zero to one over natural log of x times x squared times f of one over x. And so notice this is gonna be improper as an infinite integral because we go to infinity obviously, but this is gonna be improper because of a discontinuity probably at this point where x equals zero. Okay, so let's get going with this first calculation which I've set up up here. So we're gonna make the substitution x equals one over u. So that tells us that dx is equal to minus one over u squared du. Okay, now next, if x is equal to one, then that means that u is also equal to one because we have the equation one over u equals one then we'll probably wanna flip this equation to see that this means u is equal to one over x, and then see as x approaches infinity, u will be approaching zero. Okay, nice. So now we can do this appropriate substitution up here. So this will be the integral from one up to zero of the natural log of one over u. So that's gonna be like plugging in x up there, and then our dx term will be this minus one over u squared du. So I'll write that as minus du. And then I'll put a u squared down here. And then I have f evaluated at one over u. Okay, nice. And now where can we go from here? Well, notice we can next use the standard identity that the natural log of one over u is equal to minus the natural log of u in order to flip this sign right here. So let's smudge this out. This will become natural log of u if we change this from a minus to a plus. Next, we can change the order of the bounds of integration and change this back from a plus to a minus. Finally, we'll just replace all the u's with x's and we will have derived this first tool. Okay, now we're gonna look at this second tool and we will show that the integral from zero to one of x to the m natural log of x is equal to minus one over m plus one squared. I would say there are two main strategies we could use here. We could leave this in terms of natural logs and use integration by parts along with induction to get this result or we could do a change of variables so we're working with exponential functions and do a simpler argument involving integration by parts. And that's exactly what we'll do. So I've readied my integral up here and now we're ready to make that change of variables. So we'll take y to be the natural log of x and now notice that that is the same thing as saying that x is equal to e to the y. Well, if x is equal to e to the y, that means dx is equal to e to the y dy just by taking the derivative. Now let's see what's happening with the bounds. So as x approaches zero from above, we see that we have to approach zero because natural log is discontinuous at zero. It has to be from above just based on the interval of our integral. Well, if x is approaching zero from above, natural log of x approaches minus infinity. So we have y is approaching minus infinity. Furthermore, if x is equal to one, y is equal to the natural log of one, which is zero. We don't have to take a limit there. Okay, so now we can do our change of variables. So we'll have the integral from minus infinity to zero of, well, let's see, we have x to the m, that's e to the y to the m, which is e to the m times y. And then we'll have natural log of x. Well, that is y, so I can put a y out here. And then our dx, which is another e to the y. So I might as well multiply that in here and I'll have e to the m plus one y dy. 
Okay, so that is finally the integral that we're after. Okay, so that's set up perfectly for doing integration by parts. And in fact, we can use this DI method made famous by another math YouTuber. I think you guys probably know who it is. So let's maybe put DI, and then let's recall that the rule is we put polynomials or things that become simpler when taking the derivatives in the left-hand column and everything else in the right-hand column. So we'll put a Y here, and then we'll put a one here and a zero here because we just took the derivative down the line. Then we'll have E to the M plus one times Y here. Antiderivative of that is one over M plus one, E to the M plus one times Y. The antiderivative of that is one over M plus one squared E to the M plus one times Y. And then the rule is we match on the diagonal and alternate the sign. So this is attached to a plus and the next one is attached to a minus. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. That's gonna leave us with y over m plus one, e to the m plus one times y evaluated at minus infinity and zero. Keeping in mind that this evaluation at minus infinity is really a limit. Okay, and then next we have to subtract this off. So that's gonna be minus one over m plus one quantity squared e to the m plus one times y, again, evaluated at minus infinity and zero. Okay, so now let's see what we have. Sticking zero in here, we'll see that we have a zero for the y, e to the zero, which is one. So we have zero times one, which is zero. Letting y approach minus infinity, we see that we get minus infinity here, but that's going to be e to the minus infinity, which is like zero. Now we could apply L'Hopital's rule once or use some other method to see that the limit of that is also zero. So in the end, this term charges off towards zero. Furthermore, this lower bound will go in here and take this to zero. So all we're left with is this function evaluated at the upper bound, which is minus one over m plus one squared. But that's exactly what we wanted over here. And now we're ready to derive our last tool, which, which will make our calculation simpler. And that is the sum of the reciprocal of all of the odd squares is pi squared over eight. Okay, so let's get to that. So I will say that we will use a shortcut here. We will use the fact that we know what the sum of the reciprocals of all of the squares are. That's the famous Basel problem, and I've proven that on the channel before. Okay, so let's see. We've got the sum of all of the odd reciprocals, but notice that we can write this as the sum of all reciprocals. Maybe that would be m going from one to infinity of one over m squared. So that's going to be the sum of the reciprocal of all of the squares. And then we can subtract off the sum of the reciprocal of the even squares. So that'll be 2m quantity squared. So that's clearly going to be just the odd ones left after we do that subtraction. Okay, but now notice that this is the Riemann zeta function evaluated at 2. So I'll just call that zeta of 2. Then we can do some factorization here. We can factor a one quarter out because we have a two squared in the denominator. And we're left with this sum as m goes from one to infinity of one over m squared. So that leaves us with minus one quarter zeta of two, but that's gonna leave us with three quarters, the Riemann zeta function evaluated at two. But like I said, that is just the famous Basel problem. In other words, that is the sum as m goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over m squared. And we'll just take the kind of well-known value of that of pi squared over 6. So we have 3 over 4 times pi squared over 6. But as you can see, multiplying that out, we'll get this result over here, pi squared over 8. Okay, we just finished up with our last tool and now we're ready to evaluate our integral. So I've done the first step of separating this into two integrals. So instead of from zero to infinity, we have zero to one and one to infinity. And now we're gonna take this second integral and apply the 
first tool to this. In other words, we're going to change this interval from one to infinity to the interval from zero to infinity using that change of variables that we had before. But since we did it in general over here, I can just state the result. So I'll copy this one down, the integral from zero to one, natural log of x over one plus x squared plus x to the fourth dx. And then I have minus the integral from zero to one of I still have natural log of x in the numerator, that does not change. And then in the denominator, I have x squared, and then this polynomial evaluated at one over x. So that's gonna leave me with one plus one over x squared plus one over x to the fourth dx. Okay, next I'm going to build up this denominator so it will cancel everything in this sort of complicated thing right here. And I'll do that by changing this x squared to an x to the fourth. But I can only do that if I multiply the numerator by x squared as well. So let's see what that will do. So multiplying that through into this term, we'll see that we have x to the fourth plus x squared plus one. But that's exactly what we have here, just in a different order. So I'm going to rewrite this as the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x squared times the natural log of x. That's just combining these two and then factoring the natural log out. And then this is all over the same denominator, dx. Okay. Now we can be motivated by the fact that this denominator looks like our difference of cubes factorization that you should hopefully be familiar with. So let's just recall that. If we take one minus t cubed, that factors as one minus t times one plus t plus t squared. Okay, nice. Well, now if we square this thing in the numerator, then that allows us to multiply by something in the denominator. So this will collapse to a difference of cubes. So let's do exactly that. So I'm going to square this here, but that means, means I need to multiply this by one minus X squared. So let's see what I've got. So now I have the integral from zero to one. I'll go ahead and multiply this out. That leaves me with X to the fourth minus two X squared plus one times the natural log of X over one minus X to the sixth DX. Okay, you might wonder why we did this, but now that we have this one minus X to the sixth in the denominator, we can use geometric series formula. So let's recall that as well. So if we have one over one minus R, that's the same thing as the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of r to the n. And that's true if the absolute value of r is less than one. Now we have that where r is equal to x to the sixth here, everywhere except this upper bound. But this only failing at the upper bound is not a problem for our integral. That's because it's a set of measure zero, that single point. Okay, so just to reiterate what we're going to do, we're going to take this term, which is really 1 over 1 minus x to the 6th, and we will expand it as a geometric series. So that leaves us with the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of the integral from 0 to 1 of natural log of x times x to the 4th minus 2x squared plus 1 times x to the 6th n dx. Why is it x to the 6th n? Because the role of r is being played by x to the 6th here. And you might see that I did a sneaky interchange of the integral and the summation, but that's okay in this case. Okay, so let's bring this step to the top. I'll probably distribute this stuff through as well, and then we'll finish this off. On the last board, we ended up with something that could be distributed and pulled apart into multiple sums looking like this. So we've got the sum as n goes from zero to infinity, the integral from zero to one of x to the six n plus four natural log dx, and then similar things right here. But let's notice that these interior integrals here, so maybe I'll box this one in yellow, look like this second tool right here. So here the role of m is being played by 6n plus 4. Here 6n plus 2 and here 6n. So that allows us just to apply this thing that we already calculated. 
So that's going to give us the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of minus 1 over 6n plus 5 squared. Again, by this rule that we've got. Then the same kind of thing is going on here. So this is going to be minus the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 2 now. But I'll just put a 2 here and change this minus to a plus. And then we've got 6n plus 3 quantity squared in the denominator. Then the same kind of thing over here. So we're going to have minus our sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of 1 over 6n plus 1 squared. And now I'm going to do a little bit of a trick. I'm going to take this 2 and I'm going to change it to a 3. But that means I added another copy of this sum. So that means I need to subtract a copy of this sum. So I've got the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over 6n plus 3 squared. OK, nice. But now between this first sum, I'll take this minus sign out front so that we can see it a little cl more clearly. And these last two sums, you can see that we're summing over all odd positive integers. These are ones of the form 6n plus 1, 6n plus 3, and 6n plus 5. But every odd integer can be represented as one of these forms. So that means we can put these three blue sums together and we will be left with minus the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over 2n plus 1 squared. Okay, nice. Now we can take this and factor a 3 squared out of the denominator. And then we'll be left with plus 1 over 9, the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of 3 over 2n plus 1 squared. So that's, again, by factoring a 3 squared out of the denominator. Now we can do some simplification. This 3 and 9 will cancel to leave us with a 3 in the denominator. And we're going to be left with minus 2 thirds. And then the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of 1 over 2n plus 1 quantity squared. But we calculated this sum already to be pi squared over 8. So we're left with minus 2 thirds times pi squared over 8. But now we can clearly simplify that pretty easily. This 2 will cancel to a 1 if it cancels this 8 to a 4. And we're left with minus pi squared over 12. And that's a good place to stop.